Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss Tube, coming to you on this Wednesday, March the 6th, 2019, with my next update. Back in the original, well, I guess current original location, um, the sun is shining today. It looks like it's a beautiful day, but y'all, it's cold outside. Uh, I don't think we're going to get above freezing today. Um, but it looks, it looks warm. <laughs> anyway, um, so the coloring is much better over here, and so here we are. I know, the wall is still blank. Quick shout out here to everybody who recommended command strips. I'm sorry that I was so clueless about that, um, but of course, um, I used them in college, so <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Anyway, um, Danny bought me a set. Uh, so that I can put something on this wall here just so you guys can have something to look at uh, as we sort of go through these FFOs that I'm doing. Uh, but he he has them at work. <laughs> um, so that's okay. Um, I will hopefully be able to have something up there this time next week. Fingers crossed. That's the hope. So uh, I don't want to make any grand statements about how long this video is gonna be because, famous last words, uh, but I don't expect this to be terribly long. Mm. Um, so here's what we've got to do. Um, I have a few thank you for the mention. I have two FFOs, two, it's crazy. And then I have the two projects that I've worked on in the last week. Um, then we're gonna go into plans and my plans have changed just a little bit, just a wee bit. Um, I'm also going to run through School of Magical Stitches and Literature, March and April, Stitching Extra Credit, and what I have chosen for each of those. Uh, climbing Stitcher. And um, so somebody else. And I'm sorry um, who, who else asked me to do this. Um, but it was requested that I go through what my choices are. Uh, and so I thought that I would do that. Um, it might help some of you who are struggling with to find projects to fit. The extra credit this, this go-round seems to be pretty straightforward, but hey, maybe I've got some ideas. Um, there is one that is definitely, definitely more difficult than the rest. But anyway, so we'll go through that. And then um, very little bit of purchasing and books. And that's not going to take very long. So without any further ado, let's uh, let's get in the, into this, and uh, we're gonna start with thank you for the mention. I am terrible. <laughs> um, I need to start making notes as we go along um, while I'm watching floss tube, especially with the sheer amount of floss tube that I've watched over the last week. I need to be better at keeping track of these things. So I have three, maybe four, <laughs> that I can sort of kind of think of off the top of my head that were thank you for the mentions for this week, but there may be more. And so I'm going to be better <laughs> and, and take notes. Um, so let's just go ahead and get right in. Uh, the first one that I have is Courtney. Uh, she is... New Mexico Stitching Demon, or uh, shorthand NM Stitching Demon, here on Floss Tube. And I'm just going to say this here. Courtney, if you're watching this, um, I see you, and I hear you, and I am going through the same thing. Um, not exactly the same, but... Um, I was doing some organization while watching your video the other day and I had to stop um, because there are so many parallels between you and I and what, what you're, you're dealing with right now. Um, and so I see you and I hear you and um, I'm not going to go into any further details than that because it's not my story to tell. If you want to... Um, Offer your sympathies and your, um, I don't know, um, condolences, maybe, I don't know. Um, if you want to, you should, you absolutely should, you should go watch 
um, her latest video, Courtney's latest video, um, she gets pretty real. And um, it is something that an extraordinary number of people have to deal with, and it's a very difficult thing to talk about. Um, but Courtney, I get it. I get it. Um, in this video, towards the end, she does her shoutouts, and she's got the nicest shoutouts. <laughs> like, I was feeling so good about myself, and so, like, happy and joyous and just so appreciative for the, the just the really nice things that, that Courtney had to say. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and thank you for being real. Uh, Courtney does not shy away. So if you don't like the swears, maybe hold off. But um, if you can, you should, you should absolutely watch her. She's just real. She's just very, very real. And um, that's goals. I struggle with that sometimes. So, anyway, so uh, another one that I watched yesterday was Pam uh, Rose City St Rose City Stitcher, um, and I came up in the conversation of School of Magical Stitches and Literature, and uh, she said that um, she liked that I have been able to sort of make one project fit multiple things um, as best I can. And that is something that's been really important to me because I can't do the switching. I just can't. Um, not, not so frequently. Um, I'm okay with working on a few more things than I had intended, but the constant, like trying to work in five projects in a week, not my jam. Um, I will quit before I deal with that, to be totally honest. So, um, Pam, thank you for the mention there. Okay. So the next one is Savannah. And Savannah is so Livy on uh, Flosstube. And you should totally be watching her if you aren't. She works on a variety of different things. Um, and her, I mean, like, she does mostly cross-stitch, but she also does some pretty fabulous diamond paintings. And this one that she's doing right now, it's the Deathly Hollows. It's huge and it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm really good at resisting the urge to start diamond painting. But every time I see that, <laughs> my resolve shrinks just a little bit. Anyway, um, so in her latest, she mentioned me because she is working on a heaven and earth design. And she, she said that at some point recently, my method of doing things clicked for her. And it just, it just worked. And it worked really well for her. And I was so ecstatic to hear that because... Sometimes I feel kind of on an island a little bit. <laughs> like, I've got my own way of doing things. And stitching, by and large, really is a personal hobby. But you have to you have to find a way that works for you. And so, you know, I did the demo and demos. And I still need another follow-up to that. Um, but I just kind of put it out there and expected nothing in return. I expected more people to be like, you're crazy. This is useless information. And to hear that it's working for somebody else, that's, that's huge. Um, so warm and fuzzies for hearing my name and then like three times that many warm and fuzzies for hearing that my method works. Um, and it just makes me glad that I took the time to, to share that with y'all. So, so there's that. Um, and so thank you Savannah for the, for the mention there. Up next, <laughs> Uh, is Kim Hollenbeck of Spartan Stitcher. Um, I haven't watched her video from this past Monday. It's it's in my queue <laughs> to be watched, but I'm on the shuffle thing, so I don't always catch everybody uh, right when they come up. Anyway, I did watch this week, however, her video from last week. And at the very end, at the bitter end, she decided to razz me a little bit. Because apparently the Spartans beat Michigan in basketball over the weekend. Yeah. Now, I will admit that I am completely oblivious to Wolverines basketball this season because Virginia Tech basketball is, it's hot. It's just, it's so much fun. Yeah, I know. I know, Kim. I know <laughs> the Spartans won. But we have a rematch this weekend, so, mm, who knows? Um, and... 
I hope the Hokies and the Spartans play in the tournament. That would be fun. I don't know if that if that can happen. I don't know exactly how the tournament is developed and what conferences play each other and how that all works, but I think it'd be fun. Anyway, so that is um, that is it for thanks for the mention. Again, if I missed you, I am sorry. If I watched your video this week and you mentioned me and I didn't list you here, I am sorry. Um, I'm going to start taking some notes. Okay, so let's switch on over to the FFOs. Plural! <laughs> I'm so excited. I told you that I had two that were pretty close um, last week. And so on Monday? Yes, on Monday, I made sure to get them fully, fully finished. So this first one is actually the first one that I started fully finishing um, before Double Double last week. Uh, so this is the one that I started, but then I had to put some finishing details on it. And I'm excited about it, but I have some questions. So yeah, I don't, I don't love that. Okay, so there are parts of this that I really do love, but not all of it. This is I Love the Fiber Arts by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I'll bring it in close. I haven't backed it yet, so it's a little, it's still a little loose. But I framed it in a hoop. I thought, how, how perfect is that? I have this great big ginormous 10-inch quilting hoop that I never use anymore. It's, it doesn't have the tension that I prefer. It's too big and bulky. I hate the the top of it here. Like this was this is not for me for stitching. So I thought, well, I love the fiber arts. That's pretty perfect to go in a hoop, right? On top of that, I lined it, uh, edged the outside of the hoop with yarn. Again, fiber arts. And since this fabric is pink, although there we go. Uh, since the fabric is pink, I thought that um, a hot pink yarn would, would work, and I had some uh, Knit Picks Superwash Worsted, if anybody's curious, uh, laying around. So then I thought, I've got to hide that bolt thing, because I hate it. It's obnoxious. But I don't love what I did. So I got this kind of, um, I don't know what you call it, kind of burlapy. Um, natural looking ribbon with some some glitter and as it turns out the glitter is not very well stuck on there I've got glitter all over the place uh, just from handling now um, and I made this little bow because I wanted to hide the the bolt as much as possible but I don't think I love that I don't think I love the placement of it maybe the bow's too big maybe I need some like tails to come down I'm not sure what do you guys think the good news is that because this hoop is <laughs> maybe too big, <laughs> it's maybe too big for the for the little project that's in there, uh, I have some space to play with. Um, so what do you guys think? Um, the problem is that I want to channel Priscilla and Chelsea with everything that I do. Um, and as it turns out, Jesse uh, is not Priscilla nor Chelsea. <laughs> so... Um, and certainly Novana. Um, so let me know what you guys think. I like most of it. I really, I really like the yarn, the yarn idea. Um, and that was a really easy thing to do. I just tightly wrapped it around the outside and then hot glued the edges um, up here. That's the other thing I have to hide. Some of the hot glue came through, and so I need something up there to hide, to hide it a bit. There is, there is that. It's not perfectly centered, but it's pretty darn close. Okay, so there's that one. This one, uh, I had ready to fully finish for about a year and a half now. And I finally just did it. This is The Dove by I Love My Designs on Etsy. I stitched and st I started and stitched this in April 
2016? I think, yes, April 2016. Um, back then, Stitch Mania had these color a day sales and they were on the 24th of each month. I'll never forget this. Uh, they, are on the tw they were on the 24th of each month and this was like the inaugural, inaugural year. I think they're still doing the color a day challenges. Anyway, um, April 24th was purple and Prince died on April 24th, 2016. So <laughs> um, I had picked this project to do for this without, like long before the date actually came. I had everything put together for this before that even happened. Um, and so the thread here is Dinky Dye's Boolia. Um, and it's a beautiful variegated purple. And then Prince was kind of a big part of my upbringing. My mom was a huge Prince nutcase. Um, and so I added the text down here. Let's see if you can see that. Dream if you will a courtyard and ocean and violets in bloom. And uh, just for some pizzazz, I put in some... Um, that is... Belsoi... Beanstalk. Whoo! My memory is better than I thought it was. Um, and the fabric is a just a plain 32 count cream Belfast linen. So, got it framed up. It's not perfect uh, because I didn't iron it before I framed it. And you can't see it in the camera, but it goes a little bit wonky here. But, I'm gonna show you this. I laced it! <laughs> Can you believe that? So I was, and I, it went a little awry over here. Um, I was on Facebook a couple days ago and somebody posed the question on Stitch Mania, um, what's your favorite lacing tutorial? And I will link them down below, um, but somebody recommended, I have no, I can't remember what their name was. So I watched their two videos. Um, and so the first one is preparing, um, so pinning your project to whatever your insert is, and mine is foam core, um, to your mat board, to your cardboard, to whatever you use. And then part two, while the quality of the video is terrible, I think it's like max 240p, um, you still get the gist of how to do the lacing. And I've watched several lacing, pinning and lacing tutorials Tara C has a really great one. Uh, Trixie Stitches has one from a long time ago. Um, and watching this one, it was just like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And so I grabbed some pearl cotton and I grabbed a big chunky needle and, and I did it. And it was um, kind of a mess, <laughs> but it worked. I mean, it worked. Like I said, it's not perfect. There are some wrinkly bits that you can see in person. I don't think you guys can see them on the camera. Like there's a spot over here that's kind of wrinkled a bit and there's a spot here that could be probably stretched a little better side to side. But to be honest, it's done. And I think it looks so good. I love it. I was afraid that the white on cream fabric was gonna look a little funky, but I don't think so now. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with that. So that's FFO number four for 2019. I don't think I have four FFOs in my lifetime combined. I mean, you know, other than professionally framed things. Um, so <laughs> very exciting. So those are my FFOs. Thanks y'all for looking at those. Um, the next topic for conversation are my works in progress. So let's get to it. The running theme for the last few weeks is that when we spoke last, I worked on something and then I worked on something else and then I went back to the other project. The same is true this week. And so I'm going to show you in this moment last because I worked on it last week, then something else, and now I'm back to in this moment. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's just the way that things are working out, especially with um, School of Magical Stitches and Literature. Okay, so... 
uh, when we last spoke in this moment through the end of February and then right into my uh, in this moment rotation for the first five days of March. Okay. Uh, so first thing, Friday, March 1st, we get our homework for the week. Um, and this was, it was a really short week. It was just Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because the homework weeks typically run Monday through Sunday. So this was a really short week just to get the month going. And our task was, um, we had to post a list last week, and I know several people have already talked about this, so I'm going to make this brief if I can. Uh, we had to post a list of our top 20 whips. If you didn't have 20 whips, then that's okay. There's rules and stipulations. Then they said that the number 13 is pretty prominent in the Prisoner of Azkaban. 13, Harry's 13, and Sirius is accused of killing 13 people, and there's another 13, but I can't remember what it is. It doesn't matter. Um, and so we were to work on our Project 13. Guess what my Project 13 is? Totally by happenstance. Marta, I didn't plan this on purpose. <laughs> Halloween at Hawkron Hollow. Can you believe it? <laughs> I, I swear, I didn't do it on purpose. I pulled my list of 2019 whips, and then I removed some things, and <laughs> this just happened to land in the number 13 spot. I couldn't believe it. So, Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow, and I got a jump on block number 13. Okay, so we had to put in just 300 stitches. No big deal. Um, I actually saved that until the bitter end Sunday night. Uh, I had... A migraine, not really a migraine, it never really reached migraine level on Saturday. Um, and so I waited until I knew I was in the clear before I pulled out 40 count. Because this is on 40 count Newcastle linen in Country Mocha by Swagger. So here's where I'm up to. And yes, that's more than 300 stitches. But we'll talk about it here in a second. So, I got going on the third block. I can't believe it. It's like the beginning of March. And at the beginning of the year, I didn't even have this block done, and now I'm into this block. Like, I, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. This block is a lot of fun. Um, but this moon. <laughs> Whew, that's a big moon. Um, so, work on this, worked on the spooky tree. The text along the top that says, in the moonlight, in the bottom, it says, in the shade of the yew tree. Um, it's a part of the poem by which I do not remember the name. Um, anyway, so so there's that. And I also got it in a few bats. I love the bats in this piece. I don't know what it is, but I love them. So, got that going. I left it on my frame because... 300 stitches, I don't know how I feel about 300 stitches and then putting a project away. I kind of like to do a little more. And I just I had this, I had this feeling, this gut feeling that I was going to need this project for the next week's homework. And if I didn't need it for the next week's homework, I could get my extra credit finished for it. Well, I needed it for the next week's homework, so I didn't take it off the frame Sunday night is what I'm trying to get at. Um, and Monday morning, we got our homework for this week. So our homework for this week is to go shopping in Diagon Alley. And we have to purchase three things, purchase three things, um, and make a project fit. The project only has to have the things in it. We don't have to stitch on the thing. So that is, um, that's sort of how that's working. Um, and so, here we go. Uh, I, I worked on this. So, um, let me think here. I'm going to actually pull it up because, y'all, I jessified the heck out of this one. <laughs> um, I came up with a, what I would say, um, is a pretty good story. Okay, so, for the first one, um, my first item was a new cauldron. Here's our cauldron. Again, you don't have to stitch on the thing. It just has to be in the project. So, 
Um, and I told this story that in second year, um, okay, I'll just read it straight up. I said, listen, I don't know what happened with that potion last year. One minute, my cauldron is there. I turn to retrieve a bat spleen for my shrinking potion. The next minute, it's the size of a flabber worm, it being my cauldron. Our potions master tried to restore it, but in the end, advised I turn mine into a necklace and procure another one for third year. Okay, so shrinking potion. Y'all, I, I did my research. <laughs> shrinking potion, it is something that they... Um, they learned how to brew in second year. And in the book, when they, uh, when they were doing the shrinking potion, in order to distract Snape, Hermione, no, Harry or Ron, I can't remember which one, threw the exploding snap into Crab's cauldron and it, blew this shrinking potion all over everybody, which distracted the whole class so Hermione could sneak into Snape's secret stores to steal ingredients for the Polyjuice potion. Batspleen is an actual um, ingredient for the shrinking potion. So y'all, I went, I went deep. <laughs> um, I didn't make this simple on myself in the slightest. Um, I made sure that it, that the story all made sense um, and that it was in the right timeline, like, <laughs> it all had to come together right. I told you, I justified it. Okay. Then, let me see what the next ingredient was. Oh, yeah. Um, I said that I didn't have enough money first year to be able to buy an owl, but um, now I can, and so I did. And so there's an owl there. I should have been working on this block <laughs> because... For the, third, for the third thing that I purchased in Diagon Alley uh, was some school robes. Okay, so I'm going to read this. I know the standard uniform consists of plain black robes, but with divination this year and our needing to depend on what the stars tell us, well, the stars are telling me that I need some more interesting robes. Plus, these robes have pockets. <laughs> I'm cheesy. Whatever. So, uh, fancy, fancy robes uh, for, for school this year. Whether the professors will let me wear these robes, who knows? They might just be for me. Anyway, so that is how I made this project fit for my homework this week. Like I said, I went deep. <laughs> Not every, you didn't have to go this detailed. Um, but it's just a part of my nature. It's just what I wanted to do. So 750 more stitches went into this. It was 250 per item. Um, and so I made it work. Monday morning, what I was hoping was that I would be able to make in this moment fit the homework. I was kind of still planning on working on Halloween at Hawker and Hollow on Monday, but that was just to get my extra credit done. Um, and then I was going to switch on over to In This Moment and continue on. I had already finished my extra credits with this project. I can't fit it into any more Ultimate Stitching Challenges. And uh, Kim Spartan Stitcher said something that really resonated with me. She said, um, she said that she doesn't like to waste her stitching time. And so I don't necessarily feel like I'm wasting my time, but I am devoting a lot of time to this project and I can't apply it to anything School of Magical Stitches. So anyway, so I was really hoping that this would fit the homework this week. And if I didn't Jessify, then to be totally honest, I probably could have made it fit. I probably could have spun it up so that some of the elements in this design could fit. Like, for instance, she's naked, so she needs some new robes. Or um, the flowers could be used in potions. Or, you know, like, I could have made it fit. But the storytelling that went into Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow is kind of a part of the fun for me. So that was Monday. Monday was a wash. So I got back to In This Moment. Um, and... I'm just going to tell you guys up front here, 
I was not having my greatest day yesterday. Um, it did not start off right. I did not. And I guess I just needed a self-care day. And I'm going to not get emotional about it, but I have the most supportive and encouraging husband in the whole wide world. Um, and he just told me, he was like, go for it. Stitch as much as you can today. Get as much done as you can. Um, he said, you know, there's not going to be much stitching this weekend. <laughs> just unbelievable. I'm feeling really grateful for that. Um, I needed to just to put my focus into stitching so that I wasn't thinking about stuff. Okay, so I stitched a lot yesterday. And then I got up this morning and I stitched a little bit and it's zooming now, like it's going so fast right now that like in two and a half hours I did 500 stitches. We'll just put that out there. Um, that's how quick it's going right now. Um, so in this moment, Heaven and Earth Design, artwork by Jeremiah Kettner. I have nicknamed this piece McKenna. I kind of feel like I need to change her, her name to Mika McKenna because the blues in this piece. <laughs> yeah, the colors in this project are so calming and comforting to me. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm a big fan. So you guys are going to see a huge amount of progress here. Um, and uh, even more so than what I posted on Instagram yesterday. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, then you know about how far I am. But um, if you don't, then this is going to be big. This is going to be big. There you go. So I am working in here on page 16. Bring it in close. You guys can see that. This is on 25 count Lugana in cream from Zweiger. And yeah, I stitched quite a bit. I'm looking at the back here. It's pretty, it's pretty nice back here, all things considered. So this little vine right here with all these little offshoot leaves right there, confetti madness. Um, <laughs> Vicki posted to the Heaven and Earth Designs page about the confetti that she was dealing with, and I thought I was in some serious confetti, and I was, but it's nothing like what Vicky was dealing with. Um, yeah, she she has some confetti. This this was um, just fun, actually. Um, this may be. I'm probably speaking too soon here. It might be my favorite page of the whole project. Um, there is, I know that's wild with, with this up here, but the purple of these leaves with the turquoise and the teals and those just absolutely beautiful dual tones. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's just helping my heart. Um, it's just helping my sort of mental stuff too. On top of that, with the diagonal blocks, I'm having a hard time finding a way to peek around here. Uh, with the diagonal blocks, I would do like this confetti and then it would be super easy background. So like I wasn't in 100% confetti and I wasn't in 100% super boring background. It was all, it was like alternating. <sighs> I just love it. And now I'm into the swan's neck and that's turning out way different than I expected it. Of course, it's blue, of course. Everything in this project is blue. <laughs> um, and I just, I'm loving it. I absolutely love it. So, some of you are gonna notice that this is um, still in my frame. <laughs> and I told you last week that today starts Stargazer. And I just got done telling you that I worked on this this morning. So, what's that all about? <laughs> um, so, let's talk about plans.
I have 1,200 stitches left of the page. 1,200. I had about 1,700 as of this morning, but I've done close to five already. So, yeah, 1,200 stitches left. My goal for the end of the month is to finish the page. And with the way that travel and my rotation are all sort of working, working out uh, this month, Stargazer was only going to get three days, whereas in this moment was going to get a full extra five days. And as it turns out, I don't need it <laughs> uh, because I stitched so much yesterday and I stitched quite a bit on Sunday and it's just zooming right along. I just, I, I don't need another five days with it. I need maybe three. Um, so since this stargazer rotation was effectively only going to be three days, it just makes sense to me to swap it. Um, I know I'm like playing all around with my rotation and I had it, you know, like practically in military formation, <laughs> like just in order and I'm just messing it all up. But um, it just kind of makes sense, right? Stargazer, Stargazer will get five days to the end of the month. Um, I thought about pushing everything out to... Um, so then starting on Monday, I would start working on Stargazer and then forever and ever after that. And so pushing everything out the full five days. But I just thought for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to like swap it. It'll just be easier that way. So... That's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to work on in this moment through Sunday and hopefully finish the page. Uh, tomorrow, I've got a bunch of errands to run and then we're traveling tomorrow night, so I don't think I can get the page done tomorrow. I just think that's probably just too much of a stretch. Uh, but I, um, but I'm confident that I could have it done Sunday but after we get back. Uh, we should be back around 1 in the afternoon or so on Sunday, and so I will probably get the page done Sunday afternoon, evening. We'll see. So, that's what I'm going to do. And then, Monday is my next rotation, and it is my first whip go of March. I'm so excited. So, it is living in my Diddly Daddle Designs bag. This beautiful. And... Her zipper pulls are super pretty. Fabric covered buttons. And that project is, oh, that inside fabric. That project is, I haven't pulled this out in so long. I'm so excited to see it. Forever and Ever, Cottage Garden Sampling, Songbirds Garden Series number one. I'm so excited about this. So this is on a 32 count lakeside linen in Vintage Winter Sky, and I am doing the DMC version of this whole series. The whole series I'm, I intend on doing, and I'm going to do the DMC. And I started this on July 13th of last year um, for the 20 year anniversary of my grandma's passing. Cardinals were her favorite, and um, so this is what I will be working on next week and I'm so excited. My goal for this project for the year is to finish it uh, so that I can get going on this huge series. Um, but nonetheless, um, this is this is what I'm working on for now. <sighs> and I'm excited, very excited. So maybe I can get this to fit the homework. I doubt it, <laughs> um, but maybe. And if not, I am using it for extra credit. Uh, next Tuesday is the 13th, Dark 13 Stitching. Is that Tuesday? Yes. Nope. Wednesday is the 13th. Oh, okay. Wednesday is the 13th, and so that's Dark 13 Stitching, so I'll probably work on Halloween and talk around Hello. Um, it's probably going to fit the homework better, so that'll work out fine. Uh, so that's the plan for that. So I'll be midway through the rotation on Forever and Ever as of next week, and so we'll continue from there.
as I mentioned, it has been requested that I go through March, April stitching extra credit and talk to you guys about what I plan on working on for each of those tasks. So before I get into that, I want to address the title. What are we going to do? Y'all, what are we going to do next year? <laughs> when we don't have Kate and Vicky telling us what to work on, how on earth are any of us going to be able to function? <laughs> I, you know, I hear everybody talking about how they've tossed out their plans this way and they've tossed out their plans that way and they're just letting Kate and Vicky tell them what to do. What are we going to do next year? I know some of y'all are looking at me like a crazy person, Jess. 2019 just got started. Quit thinking about 2020. But seriously, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm trying to stick to my rotation. <laughs> I haven't tossed everything out the window yet. It's been tempting, but I haven't yet. And so <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know. Anyway, so let's go through the extra credit and what I intend on working on. Now, this... Um, so there are 11 tasks for March and April. It spans the entire months or the entire two months. So we have two months to get all of them done. Not a big deal. And so I have it pulled up on my phone and I'm just going to go through them and show you what I'm working on for each of the tasks. Okay. Uh, number one, 500 stitches in DMC 310 for Sirius Black. And they did say that Anchor 403, Anchor Black is an acceptable substitute. Um, I don't believe that like a hand dyed almost black is going to suffice, just so you know. But that's, take it up with that. I got lots of projects with black, but a project that I've been so looking forward to getting to, one of the ones that I've really hoped would just come up in my Whipco draws is uh, Stacy Nash Primitive's Halloween Jack Sewing Roll. And this I'm stitching entirely in black. It is on 32 count Claire by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. My fabric tag came off. Okay, that's fine. Um, and I'm stitching it entirely in anchor black. I think I said that already. So, 500 stitches into this. Not, not a problem. I'm so excited to get to pull this out um, that I might. Maybe I'll do this for Dark 13. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with the homework next week. Because <laughs> as I said, what are we going to do? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's see. Task number two. Uh, so the time turner comes into play here in book three. Um, so 500 stitches for turning back time. Something that was designed in or before the 90s or a reproduction sampler. I was terrified looking at this. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't have anything that's gonna fit. And then <laughs> I'm looking at my 2019 whips because like I've told you guys, 2019, that's it. I don't have any repro samplers. Um, I don't have a ton of old stuff. A lot of my stuff is more modern. <sighs> I was gonna struggle with this. So 2019 whips. <sighs> hit myself in the face with that. Paula Vaughn's Quilts for All Seasons. This book was published in 1994. Do I have the date somewhere? Yeah, here we go. Copyright 1994 by Leisure Arts. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to have to scrap this one. I'm not going to get credit for this one. And then I found that and I was really excited. So um, my Paula Vaughn focus piece for this year is uh, August because it's my oldest. Not my favorite, but my oldest. And so I will put 500 stitches into this very old design. <laughs> and I'm excited about it. I'm just, I'm really excited about it. So these, this book was published in 94, but I bet these designs are older. I bet they are. So this could be straight out of the 80s, which would be even cooler. Um, so, so there's that. Very excited about that. All right. Um, 
All right. Up next is 500 stitches in a project that has betrayed you. Something you love but is turning out harder than you thought. For that, I picked in this moment. Um, as you guys know, last week I had that sobering thought. 60,000 stitches done. Woohoo! Oh my gosh, there's still over 200,000 left to go. So, yeah, harder than I thought because it's going to take a lot longer than I have processed. Um, okay, next, number four, uh, 500 stitches because Sirius Black was framed and now you need to work on your frames. Um, so for this one, we have to work 500 stitches on the frames. This can't be a project that has frames in it. It's, you have to put 500 stitches in the frames. Um, and so, um, I was going to pull out Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow, but to be totally honest, with that project, I do the bottom border after once I reach the bottom of the block. So I don't outline the whole thing and then fill it in. I work my way down. As you guys see with that third block, the tree kind of blends into the border. Um, it's all the same color. And uh, I'm just working my way down. I don't like to count to 92. <laughs> I'll mess up. I know I will. So I, I like to do my borders as I go on that piece. I do have another project, however, that has a border that I could put 500 stitches in on the frames themselves, and that would be super easy. And that is Flowers of the Month by Ellen Morristrell. So each of these flowers has a double stitch outer border and then this sort of dotted border, inner border. You see that there? So that I could totally do. I can finish the border on this one, on March's Jonkles, and then come down here and start working on borders for the rest. That'll be super easy to, uh, to get 500 stitches on. So I'm optimistic about that. Had to come up with something that would work a little bit better for me because I could do a cross on all of the borders for Halloween and Hawkorn Hollow, but just not my way. That will be much easier. Okay. Uh, let's see. Up next. Um, 500 stitches on something that makes you think of crystal balls. Be creative uh, because we are taking divination in the third year. And here's mine. Long Dog Samplers Opus 2. Okay, I'm going to read you what I wrote for this because this is the one that's that's pretty difficult. Um, outside of the 90s one, this one, you have to be creative. I mean, you have to try to make it fit. So, um, here's what I wrote. What you see in a crystal ball is always subjective and up for interpretation. It's probably why Hermione and Divination never got along. The same can be said about many of the motifs in this design. Is that a Quaker motif or a venomous flytrap? A flower or a deer's antler? That's very specific. Um, a dragon or something else entirely? Is that a dog or the Grim? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put in 500 stitches on this. And this is another one of those projects that I was really hoping would come up in Whipco. Um, I will probably work on this in April uh, just by choice because I just want to. I just really want to work on this. And since my birthday's in April, there is, uh, I do what I want, <laughs> uh, stitching rotation in April. So this will probably come out in April. Um, and so I may save this extra credit for then or I'll pull it out before then, who knows. Uh, this is on 32 count oyster linen from MCG Textiles. And it's not awful. Um, I'm stitching it on uh, with, rather, um, DMC 924. And I have just those bottom two corners to go. I did think I could put 500 stitches into the border for this, but I'm leaving that out. So that's not going to happen. Um, so there's that. And really hoping to get this done this year. I think that maybe two or three good five-day rotations would see this done. 
yeah, very excited to work on this. Um, and see the bit of the back there. So that's what I'll do for that extra credit. Okay, next is 500 stitches on something that makes you happy so you can produce your Patronus charm. Um, and so for this, I'm doing uh, Forever and Ever by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I said, not only is this project beautiful, the linen outstanding to work on, but this makes me think of my grandma and the good memories I have of and with her. Um, my grandma and grandpa took me to Disney World when I was a kid. Um, and is there a happier place on earth than Disney World? No. No. Um, so just a lot of happy going on there. And then I learned recently while watching um, Cheryl McKinney, Tranquil Stitches, she was talking about uh, cardinals are the state bird of West Virginia. Guess where my grandma was born? West Virginia. So I don't know. I just, that was kind of heartwarming just to hear that that was the state bird of where she was born and um, those were her favorites. So very excited to work on that. Okay. Uh, number seven, 500 stitches on a project that is set in another part of the world as you since the Weasleys went to Egypt as a part of the book at the start of the book, excuse me. Um, so during summer holidays, they went to Egypt and I will be working on Beauty and the Beast by Dona Stitch. Why? Beauty and the Beast is a French fairy tale. <laughs> Takes place in France. Um, provincial town or the Beast Castle. Uh, Lumiere. <laughs> uh, just very French. So this is what I will be working on for that task. And this is on a 32 count Belfast in cream from Zweigart. Started during Mania 2016. I'm embarrassed by how much I have done in almost three years. Embarrassed. Um, so 500 more stitches will go into this. At four extra credit, plus it's in my WIPCO week. Uh, my second WIPCO week this, this month. So there's that. Okay. Um... Number eight, I had a lot of options for this. Um, this is 500 stitches in the Marauders map, so anything map related or town street related. Like I said, I have a lot of options for this. Um, arguably I could make, I could make a lot of things work for this. Anyway, I went with Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow because Hawk Run Hollow is a fictional place. So that is, that is my uh, reasoning for that. Okay, number nine, 500 stitches in a redo of a previous challenge that you weren't able to complete. Um, tell us which one you are redoing. If you're a new student or you have completed all of the assignments, stitch one of these extra credit assignments twice. So I went with in this moment and I repeated, oh, the sun just went behind a cloud. Um, I repeated the task from earlier, the uh, something that's turning out to be harder than I expected. So that is my choice for that. Number 10, 200 stitches in something that sucks the life out of you as you've been attacked by a Dementor. Fantasy cell. <laughs> I figure if a Dementor is going to go anywhere, it would be in a fantasy cell, a dark fantasy cell, but nonetheless. So this is what I'll be putting in 200 stitches. Not bad. Um, and so most of these are 500, but this one is two. 32 count Belfast Linen and Heroic by Picture This Plus. Would appear that I can't go a single month without working on this. As I've said in the past, I guess Kate and Vicky just want me to work on this. As if they have my list of whips in mind when they come up with these challenges. Anyway. So there is that. And then number 11 is stitch while you watch the movie Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and poster before and after pictures. Um, no stitch counts and no specific project needed for that. So that is my plan for the extra credit. I hope that that helped if you guys are having a hard time coming up with some of them, especially those 90s ones. Um, if you're not a repro stitcher, like that could be hard. That could be 
it could be pretty hard. So that is it for the planning this video. Let's go ahead and switch over to the stash acquisitions. So I do have this one thing and I have two specific people to blame for this. One specific one, I think, I'm pretty sure. Um, so um, two weeks ago, I think, two weeks ago, I was watching Floss Tube and I was watching She's Crafting, uh, Amber. And she showed this design and I was like, I think I need that. I've kind of always thought that I needed it, but seeing her showing it, I was like, no, I, I definitely, I need that. So I went out and looked for it. And I thought for certain that this thing was out of print. Um, to be totally honest, when I first saw it, it was, I am 97.5% sure that it's Emily C, the Collective Possessions, who showed this first. I'm pretty sure. Um, and a lot of what Emily stitches that I tend to really like is usually out of print. It's hard to come across. And so I didn't even try with this. And then Amber showed it and I was like, all right, I'm gonna go looking for it. So I thought it was out of print. And so I was full on expecting to not see a copy on eBay for less than 50 bucks. And I got even more discouraged when I couldn't find a single copy on eBay. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be that hard to find. <laughs> okay. Um, so I put up a save search for it. And then I take to one, two, three stitch and of course, it's not there. So I take to Google. And I found it in an Etsy shop for $12. <laughs> As it turns out, I don't think that this is out of print. <laughs> I think it's just it's just not available um, on 123 Stitch for whatever reason. Um, but I found it at Homespun Sampler on Etsy. This is Cheris Stitches, a Quaker Halloween sampler. And so I ordered it. I was like, oh my gosh, I found this thing for $12. <laughs> Let me order it real quick before it disappears out of my cart. And then afterwards I was like, you know what? I don't know if that's really out of print. Uh, but anyway, I, I love this. I love Halloween Quakers. I don't know what it is, but I love Halloween Quakers. And so maybe I'm just collecting Halloween Quakers. <laughs> So I guess I need thine is the trick and the treat. <laughs> that is out of print. Um, and H-A-F-T-F. Anyway, so very excited about that. Um, and I couldn't find, I ordered it so fast that I didn't even think about no charge to travel alone. Fortunately, they feel the same and they sent me a freebie. And I'm just going to show you this. Um, this is by The Primitive Hair and it's Love Never Fails. And I gotta tell y'all, while I was talking about the extra credit for this month, I was looking at this because it's sitting right over here. It's got the date 1881 on here. So you might be able to make this fit if you're looking for something to do. And it's a freebie. It's on the Primitive Hairs. I think it's her blog spot. Um, yeah, love that. Very pretty. So <laughs> all that excitement subsided. Um, and that's it for purchases. So let's get into the books. This should be real quick. Um, I have just one book that I have finished and that is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I did finish it at about 2.30 in the afternoon on February 28th, so plenty of time. No, no problem there. This is the illustrated edition by Jim Kay. Um, I'm just gonna tell y'all off the bat, if you love spiders, you should get this book. <laughs> The spider illustrations in this book are beautiful. If you don't like spiders, do not read this edition. <laughs> the spiders are huge <laughs> in this book. Um, and there is like a, a full two page spread of the um, acromantulas. <laughs> Just saying. So yeah, uh, this, was, this was so enjoyable. It was so good to read this. Um, I kind of wish that they would just redo the movies already. Just redo them and just make them all like 45 hours long <laughs> by me. Um, 
because I want every detail on screen. Every detail. I love this. Okay, uh, the next two books are books that I'm currently reading, um, but I haven't made a whole lot of progress in each of them. Um, and the first is Jim Butcher's Furies of Calderon. I'm actually listening to the audiobook, and I've listened to the equivalent of about 50 pages. So I am really, really digging this. Um, I talked last week about how I was trying to make this fit into the Animal Companions thing, and I was kind of stretching it a little bit. Well, the Marat, which is the bad guys in this, um, they have huge birds of prey uh, animal companions, like legit animals. So that's, it fits, no problem. Um, one thing I did want to show you guys was this beautiful gift. So Sammy J, Sammy J Stitches, went to London at the beginning of the year and she brought me back this bookmark. Let's see if I can get it to stop so that you guys can see it. This is the Tower of London. Isn't this gorgeous? I love that. Great big raven there. Yeah, I love it. So, um, just wanted to, to share that with you guys. And so that is what is keeping my place in this book. Um, and Sammy, thank you. That was awesome. Okay, up next, I am 37 pages into a really big book. <laughs> so this did arrive on Friday as I talked about last week, and I've been trying to read a little bit every night. Whew. This is big and heavy. See what I'm saying? Uh, this is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, and it is every bit as beautiful as I expected it to be. Um, there it is from the spine, and there it is from the back. This is beautiful. So, I have to tell you guys that going in, look, it stands up on its own. Um, I go, I went into this book not knowing a whole lot. Um, I was just really intrigued by it, by the standalone epic fantasy medieval setting and dragons. That's really all I know, and that's really all I knew going into it. Um, so I can't really speak on what it's about. I'm only 30 pages in, and... It's already, um, it's really fascinating. There's political and court intrigue going on and there the dragons are a prominent aspect. Um, if you're looking for a book with dragons, um, it's a really good one. Um, already, I mean, like I'm barely into this. I don't fully know the characters yet. I don't fully know anything about what's going on or how this is going to progress. I don't know where it's going. I'm just trying to get used to it. Like, and it's already, it's already really great. So I am optimistic that it's going to continue from here. Um, and I think that probably once I hit page maybe 100, maybe 200, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be into it. I'm so excited. So there is that. And with that, that's everything that I've got to show you here today. Yep, this turned out longer than I expected, but I mean, like, what's new? Uh, when you get me rambling. Anyway, I uh, better get going here. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which is way later than I intended <laughs> on being, but that's what happens when I get obsessed stitching. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you are new here, thank you so much for coming and checking me out. I hope that you, I hope that you liked everything that you saw. If, um, if you're returning, then thank you once again for, for coming back and spending time with me. Each and every one of you, I appreciate so much. Um, I also want to take a second here to, to say that several members of the floss tube community are going through some difficult stuff right now um some have shared some have chosen not to um but if if you are going through it right now i'm thinking of you um 
yeah, I'm thinking of you. Uh, I wish that I had more to offer than that. I wish that I could wrap everybody in a hug, um, but a virtual hug is going to have to do. Trust me, I'm giving you a virtual hug if you're if you're dealing with it right now. Um, so that is everything. Everybody take care. Happy stitching. Be kind. See y'all next week.